shout hallelujah. Please let me be seated and put those hands together for the Lord. It's my new dawn era. In this service, we shall be calling ourselves to worship as we read together from Psalm 87. I will take verse 1 and then you read verse 2. Psalm 87, verse 1. His foundation is in the holy mountains. Verse 2 together, church. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Verse 4. And of Zion it shall be said, This and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her. Verse 6. Verse 7 together. As well the singers as the players on instrument shall be there. All my strings are in thee. You are welcome. Put those hands together for the Lord. It's my new dawn era. Please listen to the following faith tabernacle announcements. Number one, praise the Lord. Operation 615 is only 10 days more to go. Put your hands together for Jesus. That is July 4, 2018. While the special thanksgiving for mission accomplished comes on, on Sunday, July 8, 2018, just 14 days away, may no one take the crown of any of us in this Operation 615 that is about winding up. Remember, Operation 615 is ordained for our enthronement, as in the case of Nehemiah, which happened within 52 days. Amen and amen. Number two, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. We must all take advantage of this platform for our spiritual edification. Time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number three, Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts in various locations, courts across Lagos and Ota. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for spiritual empowerment that will result in victorious living. Time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number four, midweek communion service holds this Wednesday, both here in Canaan land and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, or Tan Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time is 6 p.m. Number five, praise the Lord. All our new members are first-timers are to note that Yoruba translation takes place at the faith entrance gallery during all services. All those requiring, requiring Yoruba translation should take advantage of this provision. Number six, Winners Satellite Fellowship. Our house-to-house -house fellowship holds every Saturday. We are all expected to be part of this for our spiritual growth and development. Time is 5 to 6 p.m. In this service, it is testimony time. Please, as you hear your name, come forward to share your testimony. Sister Evelyn Edike, Sister Evelyn Edike, and Omoyeni Joseph. And finally, with the announcement, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 1st of July, 2018, shall be our covenant day of rescue. Come expecting definite encounters with the prophetic word, with the prophetic word, service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord.
It is testimony time. Give the Lord a big hand this morning. Please come up here to share your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Ms. Evelyn ADK. I joined this commission. I want to thank God for my life. And I joined this commission, Shiloh, 2006. I joined Sanctuary, 2007. Believing God for the fruit of the womb. I serve at First John Toilet, taking good care of children. So I want to thank God for my life. 30 years, I bought 30 years adversary clothes. Say that I'm going to use it for my baby as best spread. Behold, God did it for me. Mama said we should write the names of our baby. Anytime I went for murder of nation. And behold, I wrote, I wrote gift. And today, here is gift. I want to thank God for my life. 15 years, barrenness broken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is your turn in this service. My name is Omoyeni Joseph. I come to return the glory to God of my father, Bishop David Oyedepo, who bred the siege of poverty, 18 years of poverty in my life. I joined this commission year 2009, and since then I've been believing God for a change of story. I'm into fashion design. I have invested so much money on that business, but nothing worked. But this month, God showed up. But what I used to do, I used to go to GRA, share flyers, pray, you know, advancement prayer. I was not discouraged. But today, God helped me to secure a job in an international organization, which I'll be made a manager in that company. I want to return the glory back to God, who bear the seed of poverty of 18 years in my life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That seed upon your life shall be broken here today. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is my new dawn era. At this point in this service, as our custom is, today being the last Sunday in the month of June, we shall be going into a time of special Thanksgiving for the end of the month. Our children dedication and marriage dedication as well. So if you're here with your baby for dedication, your new marriages for dedication, and also for that thing or those things that God has done for you that you want to celebrate God for, as the choir leads us in praise, please, as many of us as can find our way forward to the altar, you do so, and I believe God will accept our praise today. Shall we all rise to our feet as the choir leads us in praise? Hello, 
together for Jesus as we receive our Father to proclaim a blessing on us. Whatever the Lord does shall be forever. Anything you are rejoicing over today, you never sorrow over them. You are celebrating your bad day, you see many more great days. You are celebrating breakthroughs in business, you keep breaking forth day by day. You are celebrating and thanking God for your marriage today. In the name of Jesus, joy and gladness shall remain forever there. For all the newly married couples here, welcome to a life of fulfillment. There shall be no breakdowns in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven and give God thanks specifically for his blessings in your own life, would you? Give him thanks specifically for his blessings in your own life. Whatever you stand here celebrating God for shall be multiplied in return. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we thank you specifically today for the gift of these children. Now, as they are being anointed, let it be a mark of exemption from all evils. No anointed child here today is permitted to die. From childhood, you shall know the voice of God. None of these children will break the heart of their parents. The oil on your head today represents the spirit of excellence. You will excel in all your endeavors in life. No one is permitted to trouble you. In the name of Jesus. And the parents here are celebrating the gift of God in their hands. You never beg to raise them. None of them will ever drop from school. You never withdraw them by yourself. They will not fall into wrong hands. You will enjoy them for life. In the name of Jesus. For every marriage being dedicated to God today, whatever God has put together, let no man put asunder. No force from hell shall put you asunder. You shall live long together. You shall not cry to raise children. You shall not beg to raise them. In the name of Jesus Christ. This home shall be established for life. You keep growing in grace and the knowledge of our God. Your spiritual life will be on a new level. You never come down for life. For every other thing we are thanking God for today, these blessings will remain. These blessings will multiply. What you are rejoicing for today will never be turned to sorrow. And everyone on the line for Miracle Children for being part of this celebration, yours have arrived. Your own children have arrived. For everyone that's a part of this celebration today waiting on God for their miracle marriage, yours is established today. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Hallelujah. We'll be returning to our seats rejoicing as the choir leads us in praise. And we give our thanksgiving seed. The Lord bless you. How we exalt you, Lord, for thou hast lifted me up of my head in peace. Your banner of our knees. How we exalt you, Lord.
Jesus a big hand and please be seated in his presence. It is my new dawn era. This afternoon is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise your feet this afternoon. Rise your feet in God's presence. Give Jesus a big hand everybody as they rise everywhere. It's worthy of praise and it's worthy of glory. Please remain standing. Remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a special welcome package. Along with it, they will give you a slip to fill. As soon as you receive both the package and the slip, you may take your seat and begin to fill that slip in the course of this welcome. Make sure you receive your copy of the package and the slip and then take your seat and begin to fill that slip in the course of this welcome. I'd like to welcome you this afternoon on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oenico. I want you to know you have come today to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge. And that means every siege against your life and against your destiny comes to an end today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to the scriptures, please, once you receive your copy, be seated. Once you receive your copy, be seated. Once you get your copy, please be seated. According to scriptures, the company you keep determines what accompanies you. God has brought you today to this company of the blessed. The blessings of God here will accompany you in the name of Jesus. He has brought you to this company of testi testifiers. Testimony shall become your identity from now in the name of Jesus. He has brought you to this breakthrough company. Breakthrough shall become your experience from now. But according to scriptures, we are made to understand that it is those who are planted in the house of God that will flourish in the court of our God. Therefore, my charge to you is settled down here. Engage everyone that comes from this altar in teachings, instructions, prophetic directions, and as you put God's word to work, his word will work wonders in every department of your life. And like God did for Obedidom in the scriptures, who engaged with him, and within the space of three months, he so dramatically changed his story until his testimony became the envy of the king. For you also, as you engage with God and with his word upon this mountain, your testimony will become the envy of many within the, the space of three months in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. amen. One more time, all of our first time worshipers, rise your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Rise your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them for a blessing and therefore we declare them blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever they may have left behind as a source of concern, Father, let it be overturned for an open testimony. And in the name of Jesus, any one of them yet to be saved, we decree today as the day of their salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen and amen. Please be comfortably seated. Ensure that your forms are clearly completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Again, you are welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. It's my new dawn era. Right now in this service, it's offering time. Offering time. So shall it be for you. If you don't have done so yet, please properly pack your worship seat for this service right now and leave it later appropriately. If you have your tithe here today as well, which is 10% of God's increases upon your life, and you have brought it today to worship the Almighty God, this is the time to put it together and label it properly. And then other kind of financial seed you have brought today to worship God with, 
package everything in honor of Jesus as we get set to worship him right now with our seed. As we do so, let's remember the Bible says very, very clearly to us, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down. Not only that, running over shall become our portion. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. I see this becoming your own experience from this day forward. Amen. Welcome, therefore, to your season of running over financial blessing. Amen. With this understanding, please rise up on your feet and take all of your financial commitments right now in your hand. Joyfully, gladly, lift it up to the Lord and lift up your voice unto God as you present your seed unto him personally. Lift up your seed, lift up your voice, magnify the name of the Lord, present your seed unto him, and thank him and praise him because your harvest is racing in your direction. Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep that seed lifted. Father, in Jesus' name, in obedience to your word, we have come with seed in our hands today. Father, accept it in Jesus' name. For every tither, according to your word, let the devourer be rebuked for our sake. And the windows of heaven open in our direction. For every giver of any other kind of seed today, Father, accept it in Jesus' name. Lord, let this seed, as we sow it today, bring every sower to the running over dimension of financial blessing. No more financial dryness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say loud and confident, amen. amen. You may please be seated, cast your seed with great excitement as you welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir to minister.
celebration club offering. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands, everyone, and let's together again give him thanks. It's never too much. Give him thanks for your life. The grace of God is speaking upon your life. Celebrate and magnify him. Do it genuinely. Do it sincerely. Do it from your very heart. You are what you are by the grace of God. You are where you are today by the grace of God. Now give him thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. Would you ask him today, open my eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy law. Together, let's do that. Open my eyes today to behold the wondrous things out of thy law. Cause me to see the treasures in your world. Help me to comprehend what you are saying. By your word, open new chapters to my life. And thank you, Jesus, for this. In Jesus' precious name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed by the word uniquely today. May the blessing from the word keep you breaking forth all the days of your life. He sent a word into Jacob, it lighted upon Israel. May the word coming your way today change your level forever. On this business breakthrough banquet, I decree that nothing fails or goes down in your hand anymore. So shall it be. Yeah. Can I say this before you see it down? That every blessing from the Lord is protected against all satanic interferences. Blessings. I will bless thee, he said, and make thy name great. And that shall be a blessing. And now I'm going to bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. That is the security on God's blessings. It's uncursable. How shall I curse whom God does not curse? Nobody can be hired against you that will succeed. The blessings of God are far above the curses of the wicked. That's why they say, whatever the Lord does shall be forever. Whatever represents a cost on anyone's work, anyone's business, anyone's career, today those causes return back to sender. <laughs> and you will hear news. You will hear news. Every suffocation of the wicked returns back on their head today. Everything organized to drain life of your business will drain their own sevenfold. And you get your own back sevenfold. Whatever anyone may have lost to the devil either too, in the pursuit of your endeavors, it is fully restored back to you today. <laughs> and so shall it be. Yeah. It's my new dawn era. <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand and get seated, please. 
Thank you, Jesus. Remember, the supernatural is your new realm in redemption. That means the supernatural is your natural estate in redemption. Having it outside human limitations is your heritage in redemption. Being a surprise to those around you is your new lifestyle in redemption. For the wind blows you at least and you hear the sound thereof, you can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So never say, as a human being, what can I do? You have left that realm by redemption. Never say under the circumstances. You have left under the circumstances longest time. Rest up together with Christ, made to sit together with him in heavenly places, far above situations and circumstances of life. You have left that realm. Let what you know find expression through your mouth. And then you possess your possession without apologies. So the supernatural is our natural estate in redemption. And obedience of faith is the gateway to that realm. John 14, 21. The Bible says, whosoever has my commandment and keeps it is the one that loves me. And whosoever loves me will love my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. It's obedience that establishes us in the realm of the supernatural. No man like Moses, a prophet, according to what God said, What was it? God said, now, arise, guard yourself, you go down to Egypt, and bring me the people, bring my people out. And so, Moses took his wife, and took his children, chapter 4, from first Exodus, verse 20, and departed. And he began to explode in the supernatural. Obedience launched him there. The disciples were told, go to all the world and preach the gospel. And so they went. And he said, this time we'll follow you as you go. They went and preached everywhere. God also walking with them, confirming the world with signs following. Obedience is the gateway to the world of the supernatural. Obedience. 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 Obedience of faith. Obey, believing. Obey, believing. And your obedience motivated by love. So you just keep changing level. Before your mockers, you keep changing level. He keeps preparing the table for you before your enemies. Your cup is running over. Why? He, you allow his instructions to lead your way. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm following his instructions. Therefore, I shall not want. May everyone here receive fresh grace today Amen. for tireless and delightsome obedience. Amen. No explanation is tenable with God for our disobedience. His commandments are not grievous. There's nothing he tells you and me to do that has not enabled us to do. You don't know the power of God until you start walking in obedience. You don't know his power until you start walking in love-motivated obedience. Love-motivated obedience. Somebody will bother, why are we giving offering? The only thanksgiving. Psalm 96, 
verse 7 and 8. He said, give unto the Lord, O ye kindness of people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. It's an instruction. Amen. That is, our thanksgiving is not complete without a seed in our hand. You are interested? Come along. You are not interested? Goodbye. Yes, if, when you allow God to lead you, doors keep opening on their own accord. You know the reason why? He will always manifest himself to those who walk in obedience. Always. He will be there on the spot. Very present in type of need. Very present in time of need. May we all receive fresh grace today for tireless and delightsome obedience to every instruction. Yeah. You receive that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Every instruction of the Lord is designed for our change of position. You obey one instruction, changes of position. Obey the next, change of position again. Obey the next, and that's what he does. Every scriptural based instruction is for your change of position. You are interested? Get involved. You are not interested? Do what you please. Why this unending? Engagement in soul winning, soul bringing, kingdom advancement prayers, kingdom advancement, investment. Why? Why keep engaging? Every commandment of scriptures is for our profiting. It's not adding anything to God. It's adding everything to us. You obey what I tell you to do, I will set you on high above all nations. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed outside the city and all these blessings will come to you and overtake you. And now these are the following chain of blessings that accrue to your obedience. Every child of God is redeemed a fruit-bearing branch of the vine. I'm the vine and you are the branches. Every branch of me that bears fruit, I will keep feet so it can keep bearing fruit. And every brand that bear not fruit, I take away. May you receive grace today to remain a fruit bearing branch for life. Yeah. He said, even in old age, they shall still bring forth fruit to show that the Lord is upright. So, fruit bearing is for life. Say with me, fruit bearing is for life. Say with me, fruit bearing is for life. Fruit bearing is for life. May every one of us today receive grace for a lifelong fruit-bearing experience. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. So we have four open platforms for fruit-bearing engagement for life. One, soul winning. He that winning souls is wise. And by wisdom kings reign and princes decree justice. And they that torment righteousness will shine as the stars forever and ever. So he leaves you with amazing blessings. Proverbs 11.30, Proverbs 8.15 and 16, and Daniel 12.3. Not 
they that attempt to turn, they that turn men to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. Remember, we are not rewarded for efforts made. We are rewarded for results obtained. Your life will never lack results anymore. Then the other one we have not been taking particular note of is the soul bringing engagement. Go to the highways and edges and compare them to come that my house may be filled. Luke 14, 23. Jesus speaking said, other sheep have I that are not of this fold. Them also must I bring. John 10, 16. So I say, soul bringing task. Just bring them. I will give them rest. Bring them. They are going up and down in life. I will give them rest. Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. When it's time for them, they say, oh, no, we are busy. He said, go and compare them to come. Go and compare them to come down my house. Maybe feel, I want to give them rest. I want to give them rest. My God will give you rest. And so go compare others so you can give them rest also. Amen. And what is the need for me? In the multitude of people who is the king's honor. Proverbs 14, 28. And it that honors me, I will honor. So, you have a honor package in return for compelling people to come to Jesus so he can save and deliver them and establish their breakthroughs in life. So important. Number three is kingdom prayer, kingdom advancement prayer. Engaging in kingdom advancement prayer entitles you to open decorations from above. And the Lord that sees your prayer investment in secret shall reward you openly or decorate you openly. Shall decorate you openly. That my daughter who was a Muslim convert, there was no uh, sign that she was anywhere but in kingdom advancement prayers. And God came down by an angel, visited his son in Niger, in Mena, and visited her here in Lagos, and had a glorious wedding by the hand of God for engaging in kingdom advancement prayers, she was openly decorated. You still remember the testimony? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A man dressed in white walked up to his son because they threw them out of their out of her marital home after she gave her life to Jesus. And said, Follow me. The son said, No, I don't know your company. He said, I say, follow you. So he followed him. Took him to the market, cow market, got him a big cow at 150000 paid the money. In just money. <laughs> Amen. Bought crates of soft drinks and uh, what is it? And bags of rice, you know. Ow! Disappeared. There is no way of saying thank you. The same angel, I believe, came down to Lagos yes. and walked to Ojaoba and uh, got materials, shoes, bags. And 100,000? 100,000. 100,000. And said they should call her that there's something for her here. And I'm coming back. So they call her. The angel has your number. <laughs> angel has your number. It doesn't need to ask anybody. And deliver to her the exact cloth they had designed for the marriage. And a pair of shoes. And then bag. Back to March. And let a hundred thousand naira to spend. <laughs> Amen. For praying kingdom and that is what they call open decoration. Yes, what prayer were they praying? Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord be name, thy kingdom come. So as you do that with fasting, it will openly decorate you to another level. So it's an open platform that anybody can engage till very old age. Moses was in prayer till 120. 
And then number four is material and financial investment in kingdom advancement endeavors. Getting for across the church, using the blessing of God in your life, buying buses when you are unable to, keeping them inside, having more combats than you can handle with your vehicles, and you are just investing with delight. You don't have to do it. You only choose to do it if you're interested. Those are platforms for continuous and unending breakthroughs in life. You seek first the kingdom of God and all these things that others are dying and struggling to get are simply added to you. That is the mother of all breakthroughs. That is breakthrough without stress. That is scaling new heights without pressure. That is God decorating you in response to your obedience and nothing else. In the name of Jesus, may this become your lifestyle for life. Yeah. Every true lover of God is ordained a pay setter, a pathfinder, and a trailblazer. The things that I have not seen, they are the order of happiness in their lives. So when you are practically in love with God, you just become an ordained pay setter, an ordained pathfinder, an ordained trailblazer. You become a point of reference in your field. Now, in the name of Jesus, I decree your access to that realm in life. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. Yeah. That is the summary of engaging the power of law, engage the supernatural power of law. It just turns into a supernatural entity. It establishes your supernaturality in the world that is come back with all kinds of challenges. You are just scaling new heights while things are burning down. Amen. In Nagai chapter 1, it says, When you disconnect my blessings in your life from promoting my kingdom, the heaven over you may be stayed from dew, and the earth from yielding her fruit. Why? Because of my house that lies down in waste, and you run everyone to his own house. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 to 13. So committing his blessings in our life to promoting his kingdom, we keep the blessings multiplying. 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 You'll be changing levels without any pressure around any area of your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's not about what you do as business. It's about where you stand with God in the covenant. Otherwise, how could David Green become one of the biggest businesses in the world, selling handcrafts, you know, clocks? Table clock, wall clock. We bought some of them from my house sometimes. That's what he says. Okay, what is that to the economy? Uh, you better ask what is that to the covenant. And whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. You don't need complexities. Just walk in simplicity of faith and obedience to God. Whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. One of us here was selling waste bottles, waste bottles, waste bottles. And from that, found our way to America, got a degree at an extreme age, sent all our children to school, they are all graduates, Man, from selling waste bottles. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. Pastors happen to be the most pitiable group of people in the world when I came into ministry. But in all time, by engaging with God. Now everybody is bothered about pastors. Why? Someone who God showed the way has shown it to others. Clean way. Clean way. Clean way. In the name of Jesus, that's what God will turn you into in your endeavors. Yeah. You'll be showing others how to go about it by the way you are going about it. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. So take those four platforms in your hand. 
your non-engagement with any is a proof of your non-alignment with God. Amen. There are many of us in this church who are engaging on those four platforms. They are witnessing. They are compelling people to come. They are bringing them in their vehicles. They are hiring vehicles for them. They are praying and remembering my prayers. And they are investing of their resources in advancing the cause of the kingdom. And somebody else is doing, they are doing nothing. Of the four, is not involved in any. And God is no respect of persons. You, there is no free lunch in life. You can't make omelets without breaking eggs. If you won't move, nothing will move. Nothing will move. It is our obedience that God blesses, not our insight. If Abraham never moved, God's word will never come to pass in his life. If Moses never moved, God's word will never come to pass in his life. If Noah never moved, God's promise will never come to pass in his life. So it's time to make the moves that will lead to making the news. Make the moves. You soon start making the news. Make the moves today. You start making the news tomorrow. Make the moves today. And you start making the news tomorrow. Make the moves today. Don't feel unconcerned. Don't ask what I'm doing that for. What will the pastor be doing if I'm doing all that? I was no pastor when I started doing that. I had no inkling of ministry when Jesus built the first church through my hands at the age of 19. I was a schoolboy. Amen. No, no. It's where your heart is. That matters. Not your title. God does not reward titles. He does not reward callings. It was our obedience to his commandments. Now, in the name of Jesus, no one shall be an observer in this star-making phase of our ministry. Yeah. I have told you that before, and I'm saying it again. If global entities don't rise from this church, I'm a fake prophet. But they're already rising. Somebody is uh, doing fashion design, now got a multinational job as a manager. What? Won't he climb the ladder? No. The, the ladder has been climbed. <laughs> Kingdom engagement has climbed the ladder. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Has climbed the ladder. That's how a young lady will come out of school and then suddenly becomes a resource person to Harvard University. How? Is budgeting for transportation for new converts? Is winning souls? Is pray? God say no. I take you off. Okay, that's how it happens. Like a dream of the night, many, many global giants will rise in this church. Yeah. They may not have any identity today, but in the name of Jesus Christ, whom they serve. It will turn them to global entities. Yeah. And that includes you. Yeah. What is in it? All that life will ever demand is in this. Thou shalt serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of your body. There shall not be barren nor cast their young in the land among them that serve me. And the number of your days I will fulfill. I mean, that is comprehensive package. It's not available anywhere else. It's only in serving God. There are many people here today, you never know pains anymore or the days of your life. You never beg all your days. Yeah. Your children, children after you will never be beggars on the street. Yeah. You never know barrenness in your lineage anymore. Yeah. You shall be far from the plague of miscarriage. Yeah. 
and no devil shall cut short your days. Because the number of your days, he said, he will fulfill. He, 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 not the pastor, not the prophet. God, God, God said, I will fulfill the number of your days. And when God steps out, every devil must pack out. He said, I will. None of you will die young. <laughs> you will not grow to be a suffer-haired old man. Please understand, these are the packages that you have in this that no other platform can offer. Can any platform offer you long life? A sickness-free life? Fruitfulness? No. 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 That's what the Bible said. All things work together for good to them that love God. How many things? If they will obey and serve him, they shall live their lives in prosperity and their days in pleasure. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. I mean, pleasures. That means a pressure-free life. Now, that becomes your lifestyle from now. <laughs> Zero pressure yet unending progress. That shall be your experience. Zero pressure yet unstoppable progress. That shall be your testimony from henceforth. That's why we said all things. Everybody serving God lives a supernatural life. We are all things keep working together for their good. All things, not some things, not most things, all things. Now, from today, all things begins to work together for your good. <laughs> Something humorous happened. 1976, a friend of mine said, Brother David, I think it's good for us to start praying for a life partner. I said, I don't need it. I said, my own is supplied for from Matthew 6, 33. He said, now let's pray. I said, but if you want us to pray for you, why not? We pray. So we pray for him, and God answered me. You know, he said, who knows God? Just keep doing what God tells you to do. You don't look backward. You don't, you don't mind mockers. I have developed a thick skin against people's views. Longest time. And it doesn't take time to change their, life, to, 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 to change their mind. They watch you go down, they see you just going up and up and up until they can't see you in the sky anymore. They change their mind. They change their mind. Everything you will ever need in life is in this thing. Does it not make sense, therefore? That's what I saw in Matthew 33 that made me enter into a covenant with it. Everything you will ever need in life. He said, all oh, these things outline from that Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 to the end, including being decorated beyond Solomon. Hallelujah. It's in it. Hallelujah. Everything you and I will ever need is in it. I pray that these things will start manifesting without sweat in your life. Amen. Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it is the one that loves me. If you love me, you will love for my father and I will love you and I will manifest myself to you. Man. And that is God's greatest asset on the earth. The redemption of man's soul. There is joy in heaven when one soul gets saved. More than 89 that are in the house. <laughs> Luke chapter 15, verse 7. If, what will a man give in exchange for his soul if he gains the whole world? So, one soul is worth much more than the whole world put together in the sight of God. That's why there is no level of decoration that God will not place on a man who is genuinely engaging with the redemption of man's soul. 
Amen. Decorated health. Decorated vigor. Decorated strength. Decorated wisdom. Decorated honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As a local pastor, I've been privileged to stand with President of Nations and trying to draw advice from me to his glory. To his glory. I've never stood an election in my life to his glory. To his glory. To his glory. To his glory. Even to the point of appeal before the camera. One kind of aid or another. I tell you something, there's a future for you. May your future not be sold off for a morsel of meat. I don't care what charity you do in the world. If you are not serving God and the of his kingdom, you are not there. You are not there. You are not there. May this become your lifestyle today. Amen. Let me encourage you with this. I've done that 42 years unbroken. 42 years without break. 42 years without break and I'm having the best of my life. You view it, I've never been on leave 37 years. You say, Poor you, that's why I'm so poor. That's how I'm as poor as I am. I sleep with this, I wake up with it, and I have no regret. One day I traveled and I discovered when I was writing a note in the car that it was my bad day. So when I got to the place I was going, because there were no mobile phones then, and I, said, I told my wife, I said, But you didn't remind me that today's my bad day. She said, She too forgot. <laughs> So on the bad day, on the way to Enugu, passing Makodi. And as I wrote, I said, ah, today is my date. Ah, mama. And I forgot. Okay. God, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> God, I tell my no. That's life. And he hasn't stopped decorating me. And he won't stop until I stop obeying him. Your breakthrough stops where your obedience stops. His blessing stops where your obedience stops. As long as obedience is in place, his blessings continue to flow. In the name of Jesus, no more dry season in your life. No more dry season in your business. Very quickly, what are the terms of the covenant of supernatural breakthrough in business? Number one, you must be born again. That is where our breakthrough in life begins. You must be born again. That is where you become an overcomer. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You must be born again. Then you become a light to the world and the salt of the earth. You become a point of reference. You are the salt. Of the, the, you are the light of the world. I mean, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its savour, where shall it be salt? We trampled on the foot. Ye are the light of the world. Is it set on a hill that cannot be hidden? Therefore, let your light so shine among men or before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. So you become a light to your world when you are born again. Simple because God is light. First John 1 5. God is light. And because light begets like. When you become a child of God, you become a child of light. And your breakthrough becomes natural in the midst of darkness. We live in a world of darkness. So when you become a child of light, your breakthrough becomes natural. You are not struggling with it. That's why whatever is born of God overcomes the world. The whole world light in wickedness. We know we have God. But we also know that the whole world lies in wickedness. And Psalm 74, verse 20, the Bible says, Have respect to the covenant of God because the dark days of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Your breakthrough begins with becoming a child of light. Darkness has covered the earth and gross darkness the people. But with your light, you start shining and breaking forth. No more breakdown in your life. Number two, be filled with the Holy Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. 
unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon the shoulder of the son, not the child. So it is the Holy Ghost that empowers us to become sons of God. And he does that by guiding us in the way to go. Leading the way. And when God is leading the way, obstacles are turned to miracles. He said, tell them that they go forward. And as they went forward, the rest see give way. Barriers on your path will start giving way now. Yeah. We need the help of the Holy Spirit for continuous guidance. We need the help of the Holy Spirit for continuous flow of revelation. We need the help of the Holy Spirit for empowerment against all the works of the wicked. I give to you power to dread upon serpents and scorpions and overrode the paths of the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. We need his help. Because as you keep making progress, the enemy is gnashing with their teeth. They want you down. But when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall set up a standard against them. You need the standard of the Holy Ghost against the wickedness of the wicked. The bitter envies of others. Some may have died because you didn't die. No, 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 this is too much. No, no, this can continue. They must have killed themselves because they couldn't kill you. Amen. Amen. This is so important. Number three. We must possess a breakthrough mentality. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Nothing works here in Nigeria, so nothing works for you. Every business in this country is distressed, so yours is distressed. Anybody who says he cannot feel the heat of this situation must be lying. Okay, you are the one telling the truth. Carry on with your crisis. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Everyone's grain pasture is in being where it should be, doing what it should be doing, serving God with all sincerity. That's what a grain pasture is. You can run around the globe, it doesn't change your story. You don't get it right, you don't get it right. We need a breakthrough mentality to enjoy God's breakthrough agenda for our life. I came across a word that helped me to view life from a biblical perspective. Romans 10, 12. For there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Where you live is immaterial. Where you stand with God is more important. Oh, yes. Where you stand with God. There is no difference between the white and the black. The same Lord over all. It's rich unto all. That know his correct number. And so, he built for himself the largest sin congregation of church on the earth in this forest. And so, he built a super prosperous institution that has never borrowed, nor taken overdraft, and yet engaged in a multi-billion project on annual basis. And no pressure on any mortal man in the system, from leadership to followership. The same law over all is switched unto all that call upon him. We need a breakthrough mentality to enjoy the breakthrough agenda of God for our life. Therefore, keep your heart with all the years, for out of it are the issues of life. He said, but I have a right heart. Your word doesn't show it. Nothing works here. You don't have a right thought. 
You thought it before you spoke it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So speak right. Someone met my wife and I um, in one of those days in America, and he said, oh, well, David, let's go for what you share. Uh, what needs have you in your ministry? I said, our ministry has no needs. Our ministry has no needs. 1987. We only meet needs. Our ministry has no what? Needs. Out of the abundance of the heart. The, I wasn't making mouth. I was giving expression to the thoughts of my heart. A needy mentality will keep you as a needy. A beggarly mentality will give, give you a, a beggarly life. So keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Number four. Face your business as business. Don't let your business become a toy in your hand. Give your business a business-like approach. See as thou a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. Jesus said, don't you think I must be about my father's business? And he gave it that business-like approach. Luke 2, 49. My father walked did that too, and I walk. John 5, 17. I must walk. The walk of that sent me where it is day, the night coming where no man can walk. John 4, 34. They wonder whether somebody has given him food to eat and Jesus said, no, today, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. To finish his work. Give a business approach to your business. Otherwise, you'll be out of business before you know it. Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. We've never gone red in our account. No. It was a law that we must not exceed 30% of our income on staff overhead from the onset. So you can now tell why we are to earn 300 naira, 140 naira salary. That's what's available. That's what was available. Amen. You better face your business as business. Man, at 4,000 naira a month, and we were having an executive council meeting. Executive council meeting on how each farthing is spent mm. with receipts attached. You don't go out and say you bought for it. You bring receipt. You don't cross toll gate without getting the ticket. You pay the money by yourself. That's how we came. Face your business as business. Don't you know when it's 6 o'clock in the morning, somebody stands up here. Shall we lift up our hands and give the Lord praise? Face your business as business. We have never waited for anybody in this life. If you are doing one in church, just start the service. <laughs> business as business. See, as a man that's diligent, people are so carefree about business in this country, sir. So carefree. All the sales go to the pocket. All the expenditure in cash. Ah, will you account for it? Make a business of your life and you see how profitable it will become. Make a business of your life. Don't do things anyhow. You know what Paul said? I labor more abundantly than them all. So you, you, you have a different approach. That's how you get a different result. If you are not willing to review your approach, you cannot improve on your results. Wake up. And let business be business. And watch how God will keep decorating your life. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? When the Charity Commission in UK came on our ministry, no fears of any kind. I never made a call to anybody on the earth, not even chairman of our board in Lagos, I mean, in London. Everything they needed. One, you need this. Two, you need that. Four, you need that. Five, you need that. Nine, you need that. Ten. All that business is business. You don't need me to find any information in this ministry at all. 
Every department has their functions and they made their reports to specific offices and so they have their annual report, annual budget, everything for a long, long time. Long, long time. I remember we had to rush to buy a pickup, 404 pickup, to fill up our capital, 1985. 19 what? I mean, our asset account. We bought it 31st of December. The percentages who are controlling the system, not anything, not, not that somebody is crying. No, no, no. It's different from what you're talking about. I can help you from your cry from my own pocket, but not from this account. Somebody's watching this account from my bow. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. God is changing somebody's story here. Yes. Let's do our business as business. And Joseph went out to do his business. Man, that, that, that young man was a domestic star. He went to do his business. He, was, he, he had a business consciousness for his assignment. I pray that the Lord will open this new light to every one of us. Yeah. You receive that, let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. Well, number five, be committed to corporate tithing. Or if you like, call it business tithing. Jesus gave me an encounter. Myself, you know. Now, you see, most of the encounters that change people's lives, they are personal. May God be able to reach you personally. I was in Charlottesville Hotel. I came here for Four Square Church uh, conference. I was speaking there. And then... I was studying Hebrews chapter 7. And the Lord said to me, my son David, I don't only open heavens over individual titles, but I open the heavens over institutions, organizations, companies, corporations, including churches that engage in the ministry of titles. I mean, it was like wine. It was turning me. I ran down from the stairs. It was burning my soul. I couldn't withhold. September 4, 1987, that was the day the heavens opened over this church. This church enjoys sophisticated abundance today. You don't need to have it anywhere. Just call it. Just call it. It answers from the inexhaustible resource of heaven. It answers, it answers. Otherwise, they tell a short man like this, they need 365 million in five weeks or we change the date of resumption. It's a carry on. Do what? Carry on. 365 came without prayer. Carry on. Carry on. No mention in church. Carry on. No speaking to close associates. Carry on. I never had one meeting with people and I can't carry on because they may not carry the faith I'm operating there. And I say, sir, can we give it about three weeks because my calculation and projection, all things being equal. <laughs> there is no uncertainty. That is, it will be so if all things are equal. And all things are never equal. <laughs> You may wake up in the morning and it looks like it's not raining. Now in two hours, it's already raining. Yes, then all things are unequal. Yes, but when Jesus speaks, yes, equal or unequal, he will deliver. Yes, the good news today is this, nothing will fail in your hand again. Yes, Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yes, Let me hear your loudest amen. Corporate titan after the order of Abraham. Corporate titan after the order of David Green. Corporate titan after the order of the Living Faith Church worldwide. We keep the heaven open forever over your life. Can I hear your loudest amen? God told me, he said, the tithe that Abraham paid was not his personal tithe. It was the tithe of his army 
that won the victory in war, and he gave Melchizedek the tithe of all. That opened my eyes. I never saw it before. And that was how we came under this open, open heaven order of blessings. The good news is nothing goes down in your life anymore. Yeah. Number six. Remain focused on God for your breakthroughs. The sorrow of them and the failure of them that hasten after another God shall be multiplied. Beware of going after other gods. Beware of going after other gods. Psalm 16 verse 4. Exodus 20, 4 and 5. Thou shalt have no other god. Verse 3, sorry. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And four, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Going after another God, God sees it as hatred of him. So, our issues are complicated. May no one here ever be deceived to go after another God all the days of your life. For 49 years plus that I met Jesus, I've never considered once any other source of help. For 37 years in ministry, I have never knocked on anybody's door in my life, can you help? This God is more than enough. You heard my vow. Whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. Whatever God cannot give me, may I never have it. Wherever God cannot take me to, let me never be there. That's my vow. I live with it. I live by it. It's my motto for living. Following another God complicates issues. Adoring a God father who make God turn his back on you. Yes, he can send anybody at any time in your life, but let him remain your God forever and ever. Hiding your Bible away from someone so he won't know that you are a church person. The church God turns his back on you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, no one here will ever have God turn his back on him or her. The global giants of this end time will be people that have no other thing added to God. Our God, don't we serve, is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us from your hand. And even if he does not, we will never bow to your graven image. Pray to another God. Daniel said, let me die the death of the righteous. Not at this point. Amen. That will be the platform for the rise of global giants. May you never miss your place anymore. Anyway. Don't let any situation make you hide away from God. If God cannot do it, I don't need it. Carry your jaga jaga and go away. Carry it and go away. Thank you, Jesus. Come and give the Lord praise. And finally, no murmuring, no complaining, or start suffering breakdowns in your life. They that murmured in the wilderness were destroyed. You won't destroy yourself. Amen. The people complained, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the country. 
Complaining complicate matters. Murmuring messes up issues, particularly murmuring against God and complaining to God about how he's ill-treating you, how God is not uh, watchful enough to see things happening to you. They all go to complicate matters. Now, as you are serving God, you are investing into destiny. Don't destroy your harvest. Although the fruit may not blossom now, there may not be fruit in the vine, the fruit of the Lord may fail. Keep rejoicing in the Lord, and it will suddenly make your feet like hands feet and get you up to walk upon your high places. Breakthrough demands joy and rejoicing. Can I hear you say joy and rejoicing? Those who are serving God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, they end up breaking forth on every side all the days of their life. I cause every siege of depression on anybody's life. And I command your rescue today. Nothing complains and murmurs in your life anymore. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And give God thanks for the word if anything got across to you today. Give God thanks for the word if anything got across to you today. Give God thanks for the word if anything got across to you today. Give God thanks for the word. Because you are breaking forth from henceforth. Nothing goes down in your life anymore. You got the key. The key is making God and the his kingdom your reason for living. And every other thing will be added to you without pressure. No more pressure. No more setback. No more failure. No more frustration. Come and celebrate God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Quickly, please. Someone is here this afternoon that needs to turn his life over to Jesus because breakthrough begins with new birth. Wherever you are today, you want your sins forgiven, you want your name written in the book of life, you want to live the overcomer's life and enjoy eternity at the end of your journey on earth. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you in a moment. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone that wants to surrender his life to Jesus today, please stand. Please stand. Please stand. God bless you. Wherever you are in the sanctuary, stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right there. Please stand. Stand. Stand right now. It's your turn to escape from the clutches of the wicked. It's your turn to live the overcomer's life. Stand. Now, Remain standing, please. There are also some people that need to reconnect back to God. You need to rededicate your life back to Jesus and be free from the frustrations of life and begin to enjoy the breakthrough agenda of God for your life. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand also. I pray with you at the same time. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. Please stand and remain standing, please. Now, let everybody stand in both in the first and second call. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Some church officials are there to welcome you. Please move. Move right now. Move to the nearest eye to where you are. Move to the nearest eye, the nearest passage to where you are. And then um, some church officials are there to assist you. Now, there are people here right now in this service who need to collect um, the papers or the publications circulated today. If you have not received your own, please. Uh, the ushers will serve you right now. Engaging our sequels of harvest, the impact of our flyers and tracts. So share them with the understanding that they are not just papers. They are power-packed revelations. <coughs> and then, of course, celebrating the blessedness of mockery. Don't let anybody's mockery deter you. And then Operation 615, prayer banquet card. Fill this up, bring them on, on the 8th of July, Jesus will breathe on your desires and turn them to testimonies in the name of Jesus. All the people standing, please lift up your two hands, your right hand please, your right hand only. You can complete your forms later on, just lift up your right hand for prayers. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, <coughs> I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me 
On the third day, you rose again that I may be justified. I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm now saved. I'm born again. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. You have turned to the kingdom of light today. You'll never be back into darkness. May the same grace that brought you in today preserve you for life. For those who have been restored back to the faith, you'll never step out anymore. Those who are just coming for the first time, you'll never know a set back in your life. Your spiritual life shall keep growing. And your command of supernatural shall keep, shall keep growing. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. Church, give the Lord a big hand for them. Please be reminded that we have Believers Foundation class every Monday. You go for only two Mondays, 6 to 7.30 p.m. And you'll be empowered to live a triumphant Christian life. Don't miss it for anything. Those who are not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost, please take advantage of that class. There's always a special session for baptism in the Holy Ghost and you'll be ministered to. you need the help of the Holy Spirit to sustain breakthroughs in life and business. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Now, pick up your contact points for your businesses and stand to your feet. Lift those contact points up. Now, in the precious name of Jesus, every business represented in this service continues to blossom. I decree no more dry season. No more dry season. None of these businesses is permitted to crash. Every struggling business takes on new life of breakthroughs. No employer today will become an applicant tomorrow. No flourishing business today will dry up tomorrow. Yeah. Where you stand where, we, where you should stand, you work with the people that you should work with, you are in the right company you should belong. He said, whatever you do shall flourish, shall prosper. Therefore, I decree prosperity of heaven upon the works of your hand today. Yeah. And so shall it be. Amen. I proclaim your life blessed. Amen. Your business is blessed. Amen. The works of your hand blessed. Amen. And I pray for grace for you to maintain God at the center of your heart. From this day and not through the days of your life, may God occupy the center of your heart. No one with a heart for God ever gets stranded. You'll never, never be stranded anymore in your life. I rebuke every spell of stagnation and frustration in your business. Every arrow shot against you and your business returns back to sender today. In the name of Jesus. I decree that no one here shall be corrupted by the world around you. Whatever does not please God will never be found with you. I pray 
that today marks a new dawn in your business and career. Every contractor without jobs on hand, you are released today to your realm of breakthrough. Every supplier without things to supply, today marks a new beginning for you. Whatever you say, we start selling. No devil will shut the door against your business. And may you never leave God behind no matter how high you fly. May your obedience continue to be increasingly more dislikesome all the days of your life. So shall it be. Now, wave those materials to heaven. That is your business flying. Your business is flying. Your career is flying. You are never at the same spot anymore. It's a brand new day. A pressure-free progress. In the name of Jesus. No more sweating. No more sweating. No more sweating. You will always have something to show. You will not fail God. You will not fail yourself. Do not fail your children. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Wave those things to heaven and give God thanks. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be great people.